Hello everybody, this is Pastor Martin Phelps again. Isn't it amazing how quickly the weeks go? Thank you so much for being part of this ministry. We really appreciate it. But if you'd like to help us financially, we'd really appreciate it. We're just trying to do our best to get the best equipment to help you every single week. <clears throat> no obligation, but if you'd like to, all of our details are on the videos on how to give financially. But today, um, I'm talking about the, continue talking about the Holy Spirit, which I'm going to for quite a few weeks from now. And so many Christians around the world have so little knowledge of Jesus inside them, basically, the hope of glory, that who is the Holy Ghost. They have so little knowledge of how he operates and how to communicate with him and so on and so on. And it gives you such a one it gives me such a wonderful tingling feeling at times when I actually think of the Holy Ghost within me. But just as I'm starting right now, and as I said, my title today is The Holy Spirit Our Comforter. The Holy Spirit Our Comforter. And but just before I get into the scriptures and stuff today, I just want to just uh, just go to two scriptures which I mentioned last week again um, that are so, so important for you to realize that no matter how much you confess something, no matter how much you try and force God to do something, you cannot make him do the work that he's called you to do. So the best is to sit and relax, ask God to show you and guide you. And if he doesn't guide you and show you, just carry on doing what you're doing. Because whatever you're drawn to do, um, like when I started, I was just drawn to go to the street ministry in Johannesburg and preach on the streets and be an usher in the church and just things like that and run a home cell and just do things that I was drawn to do until God started to lead me and guide me. So um, just do what you feel best in your heart. Don't do what your friends tell you to do. Just ask God to help you get involved wherever you can. And then the Holy Ghost will lead you and he'll give you sometimes a bigger vision, a smaller vision. But don't focus and concentrate on that so much. Concentrate on your relationship with him and let him guide you and lead you every day. And then he'll show you the bigger things. And when he shows you something specific, write it down, run with it, then believe God, then confess it, etc., etc. But don't try and force God to do what you want him to do. Let him do what he wants to do. And if your heart is right and you make a mistake or it's not perfect or you know you haven't seen exactly the vision that he's got for you, he'll guide you and lead you and help you and keep on bringing it back and, to, and, to, and try and get your attention. But I just want to just go to two scriptures that are so important, so important that um, where the Holy Ghost is involved in your lives. And as I said last time, he's involved. He knows our past better than we know our present. He's there to guide us, to lead us, to refresh us. Isaiah 64 verse 4 says, the eye hasn't seen all as the ear heard. In other words, in the natural man, or if we see him, in a natural man, the devil doesn't know. Only God himself knows what he's prepared for those that love him and wait on him. And when you spend time with him and you spend time with the Holy Ghost, he's prepared great things for you. He'll show you and lead you into those great things and not only guide, not only show you about them, but bring them to pass at the right time in the right place. And even when you're going through a hard time, he'll encourage you. When I've been through very hard times in my life and sometimes I've been through terrible times in the ministry because of trying to deal with terrible situations, terrible people, etc. But what God has done is he's always delivered me and helped me, even in the worst of the worst of the worst situations. He's always given me strength. He's always led me. He's always guided me. He's always given me grace and favor with God and man. And he's always done, um, he's always done what he says he would in his word and been such a wonderful comforter to me. But just before we do, let's just quickly go ahead to Psalm 127. Psalm 127 verse 1. Psalm 127 verse 1. And... Uh, it says here, except the Lord. Well, who's the Lord of our lives? Jesus, but he lives the Holy Ghost inside us. Except he, the Lord built the house. He's not talking about a physical house. He's talking about the house of our life. Except he built the house. It's much more important. It's not what you say or confess or don't say. Of course, it's about ourselves, about our bodies, about our faith, things we're believing God for, finances, etc. When it comes to God's call, let him do it for you. And then... Be very, very careful not to go off and try and do what you think you should do uh, by trying to speak it into existence when God hasn't proclaimed that. It's not so much trying to speak it into existence when he writes the vision. It's just holding on to what he's told you to do, but he'll guide you and lead you. Sometimes one step at a time. Sometimes he'll show you two years ahead. Sometimes nothing. Sometimes you're in, a, in sitting on the waves trying to row the boat and you don't know what you're doing. 
but the fire inside you, keep it up burning. Keep strong. Keep on worshiping God. Keep on praising God. Keep on reading your word. Keep on standing strong, regardless of what that which is around about you. And like the Apostle Paul said, he had to go through, he had to go through uh, times when oppression tried to come on him, when 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 upset and sadness and hurt tried to come upon him. He had bro broken bones because he was beaten three times, thirty-nine stripes. Could you imagine that? Three times as many stripes as Jesus was was beaten with. He, because that was the Roman way, way in those days, and just he 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 was he was he had fastings, he had shipwrecks, he had nearly drowned, nearly drowned. Could you imagine the terrible times he was in? But he just stood strong, and the Holy Ghost took him through. The Holy Ghost knew what was going on and took him through and out the other side. And ultimately, the, the Paul was in control of his life by the Holy Ghost. No devil or demon could do anything to him or upset him. Only God. And only, only God could control and guide his life. And I want to tell you right now, is even though Satan tries to come one way, he'll flee seven ways. He'll not stand against us. And when we have persecution and affliction and situations in our lives, God knows what's going on, and he will bring you outside the other way. He'll bring you, he'll bring you the right side up in your lives. And if you feel upside down right now, he'll turn you the right way up because he's a good God, and he'll make sure that you function. And he'll make sure that every day, even if it seems like darkness all around, he's the candle inside you. He's the light. Jesus is the light. Forget about the mind. Forget about all those things. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to what the mind says. And just keep on praising and worshiping and talking to your best friend, the Holy Ghost, inside you. If it's the middle of the night, the Holy Ghost will comfort you and strengthen you and guide you and lead you and help you. And if it's the middle of the night, he'll make you feel good because he lives with you 24-7. He's searching the inward parts of the belly. In other words, he's searching for anything and anything that he can do to help you, to help you. He doesn't, not too much your friend, not too much your mother, your family, your sister, your daughter, your child, your, your husband, your wife. He's talking about you. He will lead you and guide you and help you where you are because he is a good God and he'll help you and lead you into the best possible life. If you have persecution and affliction, he'll direct, he'll guide, he'll take you out of it. It might be hard for a season, but even in that season, He'll bless you and help you and strengthen you. Make sure you're always going to be okay. Make sure that even though you're, you're down, like, like, like David said, I'm down, but I'm not cast out, that you're never going to be cast out. But he says in Psalm 127 verse 1 here, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. And I want to tell you right now is, is, that, is that God has to build the house of your life. He has to. Lean on him all the time and direct, ask him to direct and guide you into the house he's built for you. Many things he'll change. Sometimes you'll be just listening to a preacher or a teacher or just reading the word of God or just praying and he'll say, do this, do this, don't do that, don't do that. And once you get that in your heart, then hold on to that. But let him direct you. He will direct you regardless of how many times you have to confess it or don't confess it. Because it's not about confessing confessing it. It's about saying, God, I'm going to obey and I'm going to do willingly what you want me to do. But it has to be God. And you make and, and God, I want you, you to show me for sure that that is correct. But if he doesn't, like I said, just keep on serving him. Do what you're doing best. Do what you can do the next day. Just put one foot out at a time. But in Psalm 127 verse 1, he says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. So you can all your life labor in vain and build the wrong house. A man that I know worked for a certain ministry in the north of England all his life. And then when the pastor, who was a bit older than him, died, the pastor said, I've made a mistake. I should never have started the church and the ministry. To the guy, the, 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 the person that, that, that told me, um, he told him that, you know, basically that my ministry was not of God. So this friend of mine, not personal friend, but guy that I spoke to, he had worked for this ministry all his life and it was just in vain. Could you imagine what a terrible feeling that must be to have someone tell you that? And that's why be very careful who you get connected up to. Be very careful that you're connected up to the right people, not just what they say, but watch their actions, watch the fruit of their lives, watch if they say what they say comes to pass, watch their purpose, watch why they're doing it and how they're doing it. But except, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. In other words, your whole life can be in vain. You could get to heaven and God could say, I didn't tell you to do it, so therefore I'm scrapping it out of the crown of life that I want to give you. I'm scrapping it out of the blessings you're going to get in heaven. I'm scrapping it out of when I judge you for the good things you've done um, because you didn't obey me. So 
constantly it's important with having the Holy Ghost inside you as your, as your best friend, as the person who is your comforter, to, to um, let, him, let him be so close to you that through good and bad, he comforts you and he strengthens you and that he, he shows you and guides you and leads you into the things that are important to do. And that, that, that he, he says in, in the Bible, he says that he is, and one of the things he's described, one of the personality characteristics and traits that he's described that is a comforter. He's always there to comfort you. So when you go through the hard times and you're crying, you're upset and you're hurt, he's there to comfort you. In other words, he's there to make you feel better. He's there to bring joy. He's there to bring peace and happiness. And he's there to say, don't worry about it. Just listen to me. You've gone the wrong route. You've done this wrong. You shouldn't have invested in that. You shouldn't have done this. You shouldn't have got involved with that person, but I'm going to comfort you. I'm going to love you. You're in tears right now, but I'm going to bring you joy. But he's, he's, he, he wants you to build the house that he wants you to build. Otherwise, you built it in vain. And, and then it says, except the Lord keeps the city, the watchman wakes, but in vain. In other words, he said, you, you can have a watchman in a city. You can protect the whole of that city. But if... If God's not protecting you, you might as well not get a watchman because the devil will still destroy you. I mean, what a great scripture that is. What he's saying is, I'll build your house, but I'm always there as your watchman. You can do whatever you want in the natural. You can have 100 security guards, 1,000, 10,000. You can have the whole air force on your uh, army on your side. But unless God's protecting you, in, in metaphorically speaking, you're not going to be protected. You might as well just not even have any watchman because God is a good God. That doesn't mean you don't get someone to protect you and, you know, if you're watching and you're a security guard or something, that's, God's not saying that. What he's saying is, is that, that um, when, 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 wherever you are, you need God to help you behind the scenes. You need God to take care of your life. You need God ultimately to protect you. You need God ultimately to provide for you. And without him, everything's in vain. And that's why he's saying building a house is in vain. And let's just go here to another scripture. So just always say to God, God, I want you to build my house. I want you to build my life. Holy Ghost, you're with me every day. You guide me. You lead me. You show, show me what I'm wasting my time in. Show me what I shouldn't be doing. Show me what I should be doing, etc., etc., etc. And then let's just quickly go here to Proverbs 18. Um, Proverbs 18. I have done the scriptures before, but and just, just if you just go here to Proverbs 16, verse 3, it says, "Commit your works unto the Lord." Commit your works unto the Lord. So in other words, God, I'm committing what I want to do what I've, what, what, in my whole life to you. I'm committing what uh, your will into my life. I'm committing to you to say, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. And then he says, your thoughts shall be established. So into your thoughts from your spirit, man, by the Holy Ghost will come the right thoughts to do the right thing at the right time. When you commit yourself to him, you say, God, whatever you want me to do, not what I want to do with my life, but you show me. You guide me, whether it's something small or big. I'm committing that to you right now. And God, I thank you that you then put the thoughts in my mind. You establish my thoughts so I think the right thoughts so that I don't make mistakes. That's Proverbs 16, verse 3. And then Proverbs 18, verse 16. Proverbs 18, 16 says, A man's gift makes room for him. A man's gift or a woman's gift or even a child's gift will make room for them. What does that mean? That means that no matter what the devil tries to be, do, no matter who the devil tries to send along, no matter who the devil tries to stop, uh, and put in, uh, which human being he tries to stop you achieving God's will, what God ordered before you were born, he began a good work in you, will complete it. He will complete it. What he ordered for you um, will come to pass. Like I said, I'm not going to get to that scripture right now, but I'm going to say the steps of a good man, the Bible says, are ordered by the Lord. God will order your steps if you're a good man. He does it, you don't do it. Who's the one ordering? The Holy Ghost. He'll order your steps. All you've got to do is get in line with Christ, Jesus, talk to the Holy Ghost, let him guide you, let him lead you, worship God, praise God, do whatever you normally do. Let the Holy Ghost guide you and lead you, comfort you, etc., etc., which I'm going to talk, I'm talking about in these next few weeks. And then you, he, will, he will then... Um, order your steps, make sure that your steps, the steps you've taken will come to pass and that you will achieve the results in your life that God wants you to achieve. In other words, what he's trying to say is, I'll build your house for you. Just let me do it. Just let me do it. Let me build your house. Don't try and build your own house. 
let me build your house and I will build that house and make it perfect. And then when you get to heaven one day, you've built this metaphorical house, you've done everything I've told you to do. It's not a literal house, a metaphorical house. You, 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 at the end of your life, you've completed it. And then you can go to heaven and say, God, I've done it. Nothing will stop that coming to pass, by the way, because God orders your steps and no devil or demon or human being can stop it. Only you can stop it. And then it says in Proverbs 18, 16 here, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. You're the gift, that, the calling in your life, what you're gifted to do. God gives you, I'm not talking about uh, here of spirit, the, the gifts of the spirit. I'm talking about here ministry gifts. In other words, a ministry calling, whatever it is, whether it's hospitality, helping people, whether it's praying for people, whether it's going to visit people in hospital, whether it's uh, an evangelist, a, a teacher, prophet, pastor, an apostle, whatever God's called you to do in your life, he'll lead you and guide you into that. It won't all happen at one time. It'll happen slowly but surely. And whatever he's lead you to, led you to do at the moment, he might just call you a, a gift of giving money. You might be specifically called. That is a gift, something he's called you to do. But whatever you're called to do in your life, specifically, uh, you you he, he will open the door for you. And you just have to relax. And it'll... You delight yourself in him and you'll place that desire. So whatever he's placing in your heart, whatever desire he's placing in your heart to do, that is the gift making room for you. You don't have to think about it too much. I've just let what's in me come out of me. Sometimes I don't want to do it. Sometimes I don't feel like doing it. Sometimes um, I say, God, do I have to do that? Whatever, whatever. But in my heart, I know what I'm gifted to do. And as time goes on, you know, sometimes he changes direction and in you and gives you starts to bring gifts out in you that weren't there when you were young. But always, as you get close to God and stay ghost, close to God, the Holy Ghost will make room for you and will bring you before great men. In other words, the gift itself, the Holy Ghost is the gift. He's given you the gift. The gift itself in you by the Holy Ghost will push aside any the water, so to speak. Remember with these rides when they crossed the Red Sea, the Red Sea parted, tried to stop them from getting across the Red Sea, but they... They, it parted supernaturally. Your, the Red Sea of your life will just part supernaturally and you'll walk to the other side because the gift in you will make room for you. So, And it says here, and bring you before great men. In other words, God will give you great blessing and honor when you obey him and do what his gift tells you to do. There's no one gift better than the other. There's some, obviously, that are, that are going to touch more people than the others. Like if you're an evangelist, to touch, touch hundreds of thousands compared to someone that might be called to visit someone, people in hospital and do hospitality and help and or, or be just in the helps ministry or be a singer or praise and worship leader or whatever. Obviously, that's they're all different and they might touch more people, but they're as important to God as anything else. The finances people give help the ministry of God survive. Otherwise, the ministry couldn't survive. So everything has a massive importance. And... If you do what God tells you to do, it'll make room for you. It'll bless you more. If you're give, called to give finances and you do what God tells you, then the finances will increase and increase and increase and increase until in the end you have so much money that you'll just be not only personally mightily blessed, but you'll be a great gift to the kingdom of God um, whilst you're alive on this earth. So man's gift will make room for him. That, in other words, you haven't got to make it work. He'll make it work for you. You've just got to praise and worship him. He'll show you things in your heart. You'll have desires in your heart because you delight yourself in God. He'll place them there and it'll just, the doors will open. The doors will open. Even if they look like they're going to close, your gift will always make room for you and you will always be able to complete that which he started. You'll be able to complete the vision inside you. You'll be able to complete what God ordered you to do. So you just got to relax, sit back, let him guide you, spend the time with him and then let him be, always be overflowing with God and let your gift make room for you and bring me before great men. And I'll carry on next week talking about it, but I just want to say the title today is um, The Holy Spirit, Our Comforter. And I want to say to you, through all of that, God comforts you and strengthens you, and regardless of how difficult it is, regardless of, of, of whether you're going through bad or good times, He'll comfort you always and always, no matter what, no matter how bad it is in the natural. He'll comfort you in the spirit. And if you allow him to comfort you, then the natural man doesn't, won't have to go through your natural mind and your natural body won't have to go through that terrible depression and oppression and upset that comes from situations 
are trying to come against you because the Holy Ghost will come at you. Stay close to Him. Don't allow your mind and your body to get a hold of you. Don't allow fret. Don't allow yourself to fret or have anxiety about anything. Just give, you, give it to God. It says, let everything be known by prayer and supplication and the Holy Ghost will comfort you through the worst disasters and strengthen you because the Holy Ghost is your best friend. Have a super week. I'll talk to you next week. Um, I'm really just getting excited if you just listen to what I have to say. God will just use you more and more and more and more to be a great blessing to the kingdom of God. God bless you and have a great week. Bye-bye. Thank you.